Hello there, Andrew Griffiths here. And Bree James. We're the founders, or co-founders of Smallville, uh, which is quickly becoming Australia's preeminent small business platform. You know, for those businesses that are kind of serious about growing, that's where they all head to, and we're pretty proud of that. We are. Today's vlog, we're gonna talk a little bit about an interesting kind of a topic. Are you making the wrong assumptions in your business every day, and what impact is that having? I've encountered this a lot over the years, where People will, will make an assumption about what's going on in a certain area. And the best example I will use about that, a friend of mine is a real estate agent. Uh, he goes and sets up a new real estate agent in towns when the economy is rock bottom. So that, and, you know, when it's just devastating and most people go, is he nuts? So when the real estate market is crashed and all the rest of it, he goes in and sets up a franchise in there and starts to sell real estate. The reason that he does that is because he says that everyone in the town is telling themselves these terrible, or, or making the wrong assumptions. So all the other real estate agents have stopped trying to sell because they go, oh, no one's buying anymore. No one's buying or selling, there's no point. So all the other real estate agents are sitting around the coffee shop, kind of drowning their sorrows in their cup of coffee. All he sees is opportunity. So he walks into a town, starts a new business, he's able to attract the best real estate agents because they're not making any money. He brings them in, he's active in his marketing, he's chasing everyone, and of course he builds the most successful businesses in a short amount of time because he challenges the assumption that no one's buying or selling because of people are of course buying and selling. But the agents have stopped looking for them. Mm. They've stopped servicing them, they've stopped doing anything with them. So from that point of view, you know, he's created this great opportunity and I see that in many businesses. You know, I worked with a courier for a while and uh, this company was part of a franchise and his line to me was, he said, oh, no one, there's no one uses couriers in this place where he was in a little industrial kind of area. One morning, I went there at 6.30 in the morning to see if there were any couriers around. He didn't get into his business till 8 o'clock. Between 6.30 and 7.30, there was nothing but couriers coming and dropping off stuff at every little house unit next all around this guy who runs a courier business right in the middle. And, and his line was on no one uses couriers around. It was a total lie. I sat there and I, I kept a list. There's like 30 different couriers that dropped off in the space of an hour that all potentially could have been him, but he's told himself that no one uses couriers here. You know, these are the, the kind of assumptions that we make that are often wrong. And, uh, and I think that in business, I, I think we have to challenge every assumption. We sure do. And we also assume that everyone knows what we do. Oh, exactly. And what product we have and what services we have. And assumptions are just, it's crazy. You know, you were in a building for what, three years yeah. and the day you moved out, someone asked you How embarrassing what you is actually that? do. So imagine that, you've shared toilets. I peed next to these people for three years. I hope in, they're old men. In, in this, uh, now most of them were ladies, but but um, but the whole idea, and literally as Bree was saying, the day the removalist van is there for my business to move out, one of the ladies who was there the whole time came up to me and said, Andrew, sad to see you go. What does your business actually do? Now, that's not her fault, right? That is not her fault. It's not her job to figure it out. It's my job to tell her. And uh, it made me realize what a failing it was. Now, you know, the assumption being again, everyone knows what I do, you know, and I see this again a lot in business. Well, everyone knows what that business does. Do they really? Mm -hmm. Do they really? You know, what assumptions are you making in your business that are wrong? Now, I know that's a bit harsh for me to say that. That's a big call for me to kind of say that. But I've yet to meet a business that doesn't make an assumption of some sort that isn't wrong. I think we make heaps of them. I think we do. And it's about our people. It's about our customers mm -hmm. more than anyone. It's about the community. It's about how people will act. It's about, you know, it's like, oh, I hear all the time, marketing, but I freaking tried marketing. That doesn't work. You know, you know, of course marketing doesn't work. You know, no one's reading, you know, everyone's buying eBooks now. No one's buying books anymore. As an author, I hear that all the time. You go, well, really? I, I don't kind of think that's the truth. But assumptions are dangerous. They are. And, and I've kind of programmed myself a little bit now, whenever I'm making an assumption to kind of get the rubber band thing and flick it and go, is that assumption right? We're making that assumption. I'm making that assumption. Is it right? I'm assuming that this is like this, but is it really? We've got to stress test and challenge our own assumptions. And I challenge people all the time on it when someone says, oh, you know, this is the case. You go, is it really? Or are you just saying that? Is that an old kind of um, old it's dialogue? I do say to Brie so all the time. Annoying. It is really annoying for her because I challenge her all the time on it. I go, is that 10 year old Brie talking or 30 something ish? 30 years. 30 ish. Yeah. 50 year, is that 50 year old Brie saying it or is that 10 year old Brie? And we all have those, 
kind of little things that we have in our mind. But if we can learn to challenge the assumptions that we make, you'll be surprised at what changes in your business. Absolutely. You know, one of the biggest assumptions, one of the biggest and most wrong assumptions, or most, I don't know if that's good English, is that- Good English. Good English is that people, oh, this person can't afford to buy this product. Oh yeah, that's a great one. That's a big one, isn't it? You know, like if someone walks into a place and I've seen that, I was buying some jewelry years back and I was looking um, in Tiffany's in, uh, in Sydney, you know, so everything there is very expensive. I went in during the week in a suit and looked at stuff, walked in in a suit and tie, I was there for business and of course had three kind of salespeople on me. On the Saturday morning when I went back to buy a $10,000 piece of jewelry I knew I wanted, I was just wearing a pair of shorts and slip-on shoes and a t-shirt, they would not serve me. They, you know, I'm kind of waiting around with a credit card wanting to buy that piece. And I looked at that and thought, wow, they made the assumption that I couldn't afford it. Oh, some guys just window shopping in Tiffany's type of thing. And I, and I kind of look at that and go, I've been on the receiving end of that a few times. You know, never assume someone can't afford to buy what it is you're selling. You know, that's the, the worst assumption of all. So, uh, so we'll leave you with that one. Yes. But the challenge for you is what assumptions are you making in your, your business and what are you going to do about them? Thank you, Brie James. No, no, thank you. Thanks, folks. Bye-bye.